All right, thank you, Daniela. It is time for the headline. I brought to you by Miller Light, and let's bring in uh, Tigers pitcher Casey Mize. Casey, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate your time here on the headliner. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited to join you. I well, not as excited as I am, but that'll be for another day. Uh, I, I, I'm real curious. How eager are you just to get back with the fellas and start playing baseball again? Man, I couldn't be more eager. Uh, just sitting at home, um, you know, just just thinking about what I should be doing, uh, you know, out there playing ball with all my friends um, and just competing, you know, in front of fans, you know, and just just playing the game I love. And, you know, I've missed it a ton. And, and I know that, you know, all my teammates have as well. So, man, I'm just chomping at the bit to get back out there just like everybody else is. You know, the, the big thing, and I want to get to this right away, is is that you know everyone in Detroit wants to see you pitch at Comerica Park. They want to see you in the old English D yesterday. Uh, you're the number one pitching prospect in all of baseball. Uh, and I don't even think it's debatable at this point. But with that said, when you look at COVID-19 and how it's taken all of us out of our daily routine, do you think this is going to hurt your development and your chance to pitch in this 60-game season that the Tigers would rather hold you back? Um, I mean, that thought has definitely been there, but, you know, I hope it doesn't come to that, you know, Throughout this rebuild process, you know, the number 2021 um, has kind of just, uh, you know, been, been the year and been the number that we've kind of, you know, aimed for. And, and if, if we're preparing for that, you know, I think you got to do it by, you know, giving innings to the people and preparing those people who are going to be a, a part of that. Um, and so, obviously, I, I hope I'm a part of it this season. You know, going into the season, my goal is to be a big leaguer. And, you know, I know the season has been reduced drastically, but that is still my goal. Like, I, I want to pitch in the big leagues and, uh, I, I want to help the Tigers win ball games. Um, I, I think Tigers fans should be tired of having number one overall picks after this one. Um, you know, I'm pumped about getting torque. Um, but man, it, it's just time to you know, you know st start winning some ball games and, and start heading in the right direction. So, and I, I really think I can help the Tigers do that. So I'm hoping I get an opportunity. But you know, I, um, ultimately that's not my, not my decision. But I'm going to make it pretty hard on them. Uh, is my plan to uh, to keep me down. So man, I, I hope I'm a part of it. But we'll see what they decide. Oh, I love your attitude. I mean, that's a good. That, that's good. Make it hard on them. Make it a tough decision. Have you had much contact? I mean, has uh, Ron Gardenhire or Al Avila, have anybody told you what a plan is? Or do they just want you to go out and throw the baseball and let the chips fall where they may? Yeah, I think that's it there. I think, you know, I just need to go out there um, and compete. And whatever happens, happens. Uh, I haven't heard much about a, a plan, but I don't blame them for that. I, you know, I don't know if it's necessary to have a plan currently. I think it's just going to have to, you know, um, you know, whatever happens is going to happen. You know, I, I hope nobody gets sick or test positive or things like that. But, you know, that could open up opportunities. You know, there's a whole array of things that could happen. So having a plan right now, I, I don't think that would be very effective because things can change, you know, in the blink of an eye. Um, you've pitched a couple of no-hitters. You pitched a, a no-hitter against Northeastern when you were in college. Then your first start for the Erie Seawolves, which we all saw in Detroit. I don't know if they cut away live or whatever to the last out against Altoona. But I'm kind of curious, you know, we're, you know, we're not, you know, announcers aren't supposed to say you're pitching a no hitter. No one in the dugout is, is, is supposed to say anything to you, but you're a pitcher. I think you must be aware of every pitch you throw in a game. I mean, are you aware that you're pitching a no hitter? No doubt. No doubt. You know, I, I hear of some pitchers sometimes that say, I didn't even realize it. I was just in such a groove, man. I knew it in about the second inning that I had thrown a no hit. I was throwing a no hitter like, Oh, I've gotten six out now and haven't given up a hit. You know, pretty good start to the day. Um, I was very aware of it pretty early on. Um, you know, started getting nervous about middle of the game when I realized, okay, we're still here. Um, this is still a you know a real thing, a real opportunity. But I was very aware of it early on, um, and honestly, it kind of, it kind of makes it a little bit tougher because you, you know, that that might allow for the ability the, the ability to you know try to be too fine, um, but. Luckily, I was able to manage that and get it done. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I was very, you know, aware of it early on. Do you, do you walk into the dugout about the sixth or seventh inning if no one's talking to you and say, "Hey, guys, by the way, I don't know if any of you guys are paying attention, but I'm throwing a no hitter." I mean, would you, do you would you rather have chatter or do you want quiet? I would rather have chatter, but I don't think you can walk in and you know announce that. I think uh, that's just you got to respect you know what's going on a little bit. Uh, but honestly, pe people were avoiding me, and I, I I did not like that. You know, I would rather um, you know talk to everybody I could in between innings. I, I just kind of like to keep it loose a little bit. Um, but you know, I noticed that less and less people were sitting on the bench, and less and pe less people were 
coming up to me and just talking about hitters and everything. And uh, I, ju I just tried to start conversations with people and, you know, I could tell they were uncomfortable, but man, it's, it's, it kind of calms me down just to be able to talk. And so I had to kind of, you know, seek that out because nobody was really coming up to me. You know, Casey, I can feel a very special bond between us right now. And so I guarantee you every start at Comerica, I am going to be right behind the dugout screaming at you and letting you know that you have a no-hitter going. Okay, that's just hey, going to be right. between me and you. And you, with this right. voice, you're going, to be able to, you're going to be able to hear me. I promise you yeah, that. Yeah, I'll be able to hear you. Uh, just beware, beware of the other fans. They might, they might get after you for that one, but they don't know that I don't yeah. care about it. But uh, watch out for them. Hey, I'm – Hey, you know, I'm from Detroit. I can handle it. Uh, uh, all right. With all that said, let, let's let's get to uh, to you as a pitcher. You have command of almost every one of your pitches. And the one thing that I keep reading about you is, is what makes you so effective is your core or your lower body. And I think when you think pitcher, you think arm. But having the lower body, having the, the, the leg strength, have, is that something that you've always worked on to make sure you have strong legs so you have the strength to throw that baseball? Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, I think it's, you know, paramount and extremely important, you know, to be a pitcher, to have a strong core and strong lower half, just to be able to control, um, you know, the movements, you know, that, you know, over the rubber, you know, um, I, th I think it's very important just to be able to, uh, you know, I, I don't really believe in repeating mechanics, but um, I, I just think, you know, just trying to be, um, you know, as centered and as strong as you can uh, really allows you to throw more strikes. And, you know, I, I'm really committed to throwing strikes and, uh, to be able to do that, I think you really have to master your core and your lower half. Uh, you know, reading about you, great fastball, nice slider, great cutter, but I hear about the, the splitter all the time. It's been described, your splitter has been described as dominant, filthy, and ridiculous. Do you agree with that assessment? On some days, yes. Uh, I would think so, but others, others are, I'm not as fortunate. Um, it just kind of depends, man. I, I, I try to make it as dominant as often as possible. But, you know, some days I just got to work with my other stuff. But uh, w when it's on, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the splitter, yeah. Is there any way when you start a game and you know, geez, okay, the splitter's not going or the fastball isn't there, is that the mental part where you just have to put that aside and just go out there and use your mind maybe over your talent to win that ball game? No doubt. No doubt. I mean, you, you kind of have to figure out what's working and what's not pretty quickly. Um, not, not saying I'm going to give up on a pitch quickly, but man, it's just it's just kind of a mental grind of, you know, it, it would be a lot easier if I had this pitch today, but I don't. So what am I going to do uh, physically and mentally, you know, to work through this? Um, and so it's a hurdle that you have to work through almost every game. You got to figure out what's working and what's not and how, how you're going to deal with it. So um, that's the challenge of it. It kind of makes it cool because uh, for me, I like to mix and match a bunch. You know, I, I just don't sit there and pound fastballs because my fastball is not good enough, honestly, to do that. So I have to throw other stuff in, in there for strikes. And so it's a challenge when I'm not, I'm not able to do that with a pitch or two, and I have to really focus, you know, and really execute the other ones that, that I have that day. When it's not going for you or when a pitch isn't working, a pitch that you like, uh, do you talk to the catcher much? Are you talking to your pitching coach in between innings, or, or is that something that you just need to work out? No, I, I'm definitely seeking out as much help as I can get. Um, obviously, I, I know my body the best, and so I'm going to try to figure it out myself as well. But I'm looking at my catcher like, hey, what do you see? Am I flying open? Um, is my arm angle off? Like, what's going on? And same thing from, you know, my pitching coach. They both have different angles. Pitching coach is going to see me from the side. Catcher is going to see me from the front. Um, and so I'm trying to get as many angles and as many, you know, views as I can see to see if we can dissect. If, is it a mechanical issue? Is it a mental issue? what's going on. So I try to figure that out as quickly as possible, uh, you know, try to do an internal evaluation of, you know, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? And just try to correct it as quickly as possible. You know, during the course of a game, I mean, I'm from the era when I grew up and watching the Tigers play is that the brushback pitch was part of baseball. It seems today that if you get close to a guy like eight inches away from him or something, he all gets all PO'd at you. I, I, I mean, are, are you cognizant of that? Or if you have to brush a guy back, you're going to you're going to pitch inside. I mean, that's that's the nature of the game. Yeah, it's definitely evolved. Um, but, man, I, I really believe in owning the inner half of the plate. Uh, it's just it's kind of become foreign to hitters, man. I mean, everybody's just uh, throwing breaking balls away from them um, and trying to locate the down and away fastball, uh, which both have extreme value. But I still find a lot of value from throwing inside, especially, like I said, my fastballs, you know, not the most dominant pitch. So I really have to locate that thing in and out. So. 
I really believe in pitching inside and uh, sometimes pitching really far inside, uh, you know, to set up you know, some stuff off the plate or try to run something back that starts at their hip and, you know, comes back in or wh- whatever it may be. I really believe in pitching inside. I think there's a lot of value to it. And sometimes if you got to back them up off the plate, you got to do what you got to do. And I, I know some guys kind of get mad at that, but, um, you know, it is what it is, part of baseball. I think of Mize, Scruble, Manning, and Fiedo, and I naturally think of Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz, and Avery. Smoltz and Avery, two good Michigan guys. But with that said, I mean, this lineup, this young arm lineup, these starting pitchers, you guys can make history. I mean, do you believe that? Because I certainly do. Man, I, I really do. Um, I, I kind of mentioned those Braves uh, not too long ago. Um, and I think it's just a really good model for us to try to follow. Uh, you know, very tight-knit group, you know, just dominant rotation. Um, and, and I think that, you know, that's kind of been the plan, you know, up top from the Tigers to try to, you know, build this rotation. And, and man, man we, got, we have a really good stable of arms that we're building. And it's, it's just exciting. Those guys are extremely talented and are going to provide a ton of value. And I'm just really happy to be a part of it, man, because I – you know, I, I think we, we definitely could be building something, you know, like those Braves. Um, and so I'm just excited to see it play out. We're just going to keep working to try to make it happen. How important is it to have chemistry with those guys? I mean, to me, when I see the four of you together, the interaction, it certainly seems like Fiedo's the, the ringleader. I, I mean, he, he seems to be the guy that, that's kind of, you know, messing around all the time. Uh, not that you're not either, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, how important is that to, to start together, come up together? hit the Tigers together, win a world championship together. Yes, it's, it's important, you know, that we're spending time together currently, uh, you know, to try to uh, lay a foundation for what's to come. You know, I, I don't know if step by step we have to be like, if we have to get caught up to the big leagues within the same week or same day or whatever. I don't, I don't think that's going to be the case, um, you know, but, but while we're in the minor leagues, all of us being together, you know, provides a ton of value. But at one point we're going to have to separate for a little bit, but hopefully, you know, that's not too long. Um, because man, I, I just enjoy being around those guys and, and learning from them, just interacting with them on a daily basis. Cause they're such great people, uh, such great players. Um, and, and they just provide a ton of value to our organization, to our team, to myself. Um, you know, and I try to do the same, uh, but man, I'm just been very fortunate, fortunate to be around them. Cause like I said, they're such great people. And, um, you know, I, I just love those guys. I, I love being able to hang out with them. You know, I would imagine having guys, your peers, really right around your age, you know, both coming up through the system has to be really good for you. I mean, because those, if there's anybody that knows what you're going through, it's definitely Manny, Scruble, and Fiedo. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's just, you know, shared experiences, common goals, um, you know, like-mindedness, things like, you just want to surround yourself with people like that. Um, Not too similar. You want to be able to learn from different experiences and different opportunities, but if you have all those similarities that, you know, you're, you're reaching for the same thing, you're doing whatever you can do to get there. Um, I just think it has really positive effects and the quality time that we're spending with each other. Like I said, we're trying to lay a foundation for, you know, championships to come and seasons to come. Um, and so I think it can't be anything but positive what, what we're doing right now, but, you know, hopefully we get to, we get to see it play out at the big league level, you know, sooner rather than later. As I said, you're eager to be in a tiger uniform, tiger fans, as I said earlier, I wanted to see you in a Tiger uniform yesterday. Uh, and I know that you want to be there. If you have to go to Toledo, at least to start the season, the 20 guys of you, how will that work out? I mean, can you really get your work in and, and do what you need to do when you're just basically playing inter-squad games against your teammates? I hope so. Um, I'm curious to see what it's going to look like. I think it's going to be um, challenging. I mean, but, but what's not going to be challenging during a big league season, during all of this stuff, you know, uh, during any job or anything that's going on right now in this country. I mean, it's just been challenging. So it, it, it's, it's going to be different. Um, you know, hopefully I can get, you know, quality, um, you know, some quality practice in, you know, hopefully preparing, you know, to be in the big leagues, because I think that's where the real experience and the real knowledge can be learned and the real just being able to set up for what's going to happen for next season. You know, I can get the most out of it at the big league level. I'll tell you what, Casey, I, I've really enjoyed this conversation. I could go on and on and on and on with you, but I, but I, will, I will stop it here. Uh, but uh, I, I, I really wish you nothing but the best. I'm really eager to see you. You know, I'm, I'm 
I'm old enough to remember Denny McLean winning 31 games in the Tigers uniform, and that's probably not going to happen again. But no. if there is another thir- if there is another 30 game winner, it's going to be you. I'm predicting it'll be you. So hey, I'll take no, it. Not I'll too- take it. <laughs> okay. Cool. That's you know that's what I love about you. I can tell you anything. I can say you know. And by the way, I think you can hit five, six home runs a year. Just you know, as a pinch hitter or something. You know, there you go. I mean, that's see, that's the attitude you have to have, right? I mean, <laughs> hey, if, if they take the opportunity, whatever comes your way, you're going to be the very best at what you do. I mean, and that's a great attitude. That's why you're the number one pick in all of baseball. Yeah, well, I mean, just strive for greatness in everything you do. Uh, I think that's kind of just what I want to do. And I don't know if I'll be hitting any home runs, but, you know, maybe I can win some ball games. Well, you're definitely going to win a lot of ball games in the old English D. Casey Mize, all kidding aside, I wish you nothing but the best. Thanks for joining us on the Headliner. I really appreciate it. Good luck. And I've got a feeling that we're going to see you uh, pitch at Comerica Park this season. Hey, I hope so. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. There you have it, Daniela. That is Casey Mize. Uh, the headliner brought to you by Miller Light, 96 calories, great taste. It is the original light beer, and it's also available for delivery.